expert session with three young professionals proffering solutions uh, to challenges in security, energy, and health. It's Tolu Olukoku, an engineer on a mission to speed up Africa's shift to renewable energy and sustainable transport. He's currently harvesting and recycling used batteries for affordable energy and lighting for different homes. I'm sitting down with the three of them to discuss solutions to some of the problems creeping Nigeria's health, security and energy sectors, sectors at the heart of the country's economy. Thank you very much, Tolu. So electricity is also a form of security. Uh, so what can we do as a nation to provide solutions to some of these challenges in this sector? Quite a lot, quite a lot. Um, I think Electric Africa, we've been able to research and develop quite a lot of this. We've worked on biogas during the COVID period and the cheapest way of making one. And we actually made for homes as a proof of concept. So we can take it from there and make it a mass production because Biogas in this nation is not um, at, at the level it should be. We are pushing for clean energy and clean environment generally. Then um, other forms of uh, renewable energy. I wrote an article last year about achieving SDG 7 and in Africa generally. And one of the things is that most vulnerable uh, villages, they are close to streams because most of them doesn't have a, a good well and their technological advancement and innovations on generating electricity from these, you know, little flowing streams. We have all these small hydro generator that you can just put in and charge your batteries, charge your phones and all of that. And I believe when we electrify all of these places with all these little, little innovations, security will be very well enabled. Health as well will be enabled in the sense that Everywhere right now we are going to telemedicine and you cannot do without, you know, um, telecommunication. I mean, when you want to practice telemedicine. Okay, just dial a code, USSD code. I'm sick. It's malaria. Someone may attend to you through all of that. You see, yeah, the whole world is becoming a one global village with technology and all, all that we have. But the issue is that we are not addressing it here. And that's a huge problem. And that's why security is becoming a major issue and health will continue to be very expensive. So it won't matter whether it's, it's, we, are, we are bringing insurance scheme and all of that. Put energy in place and everything will align. If we don't solve our energy um, electricity challenges, then it means that security would still be a problem. There will still be problems um, you know, for the health sector. Yes, Wally, everything will become a problem, sincerely yours, because security will become too expensive as well as health. And you don't want to spend too much on all of these things. I agree with you to an extent in the sense that um, you can transfer what you can get from energy, you know, into healthcare. Yeah. So look at um, biogas. Yeah. Biogas can power, you know, health centers. Yeah. There are health centers, especially in the rural communities that are not, you know, very functional, that may have to, you know, have deliveries in the dark, you know, because there's no light. There's no form of generating plant mm -hmm. to form light. And sometimes people use torchlight to even perform surgeries. Mm -hmm. So if we have, you know, generators that are powered by biogas, um, so to say, and look at vehicles, ambulances, you know, ambulances are expensive. To get an ambulance, it will take you close to 30 to 50 million just to get one, you know, and import it from outside. Now, if we can have vehicles, even look at tricycles and modify them and have, you know, biogas or some form of sustainable energy powering them, you know, that can also help in, you know, getting people access from one place to the other. How do we ensure that you mentioned abundance of electricity or abundance of power? Yeah. How do we get to that stage when we start having enough electricity to power our homes, to power what she would use to, to perform a surgery? I mean, to help him uh, while is, is ensuring that everyone is safe. Yeah. Thank you. You see, innovation is a key thing. We have to innovate. We have to bring innovation into whatever we are doing. We cannot be living years ago and still think everything will be in place. Number one is that when we ensure local production of whatever we want, it will become cheaper. Because cost is a fundamental thing. It's, it's what drives this sector a lot. So people say, okay, all of these alternatives are expensive and all of that. But if we are producing it locally, it will be cheaper. That's one. Two is that we need to encourage micro-grid and mini-grid. 
generating electricity from a central location is not sustainable for 200 million people. That is why most of our generating plants are underperforming, are underused. And again, look at the massive transmission system that must be put in place. And there's no maintenance culture. So at the point in time, they discover that energy being built is different from energy being generated. That means there is a loss in transmission. So in order to cut off all these huge transmissions, we need to encourage microgrids, mini grids, you know, so that, okay, this state produce your own energy. Okay, give. And all over the world, all over the world, name it, renewable energy are heavily subsidized. You give rebate, you want to buy an electric vehicle, the government will pay certain amount of money for it. You bring the rest. You want to have renewable energy and all of that. And again, when we have all of, this, all of these things in place, we must ensure a grid system whereby whatever we are generating that is in excess is given back to the grid. We feed it to the grid. We are working on certain things. It's not a new thing, vehicle to grid, because we, we, we realize that if you, are, if you are riding electric vehicle, what you are sitting under is a massive storage system that could store either solar energy or energy from the grid or wherever source you are getting it from. So you, you drive, in the, in the evening, you come back and plug your vehicle to your house and you're powered. So all of these things will work seamlessly if we begin to, you know, be, 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 if we become innovative about it. But our, our policymakers are really not looking into that direction, thinking that oil and gas is the pulse of, the, of, the, of, of, of our economy. But the truth is that how much of, the, of this oil that we are mining, are, we are consuming locally. So we are exporting them and most of these countries we are exporting them to are saying we are moving to renewable energy. We are moving to sustainable energy. So where will you sell it to? So at the end of the day, you discover that you are stopped. Mm. So it becomes a stranded asset. How do we restructure energy in Nigeria to ensure we all have electricity? What is the way forward? If we transition to renewable energy, there will be a lot of job opportunities for people. We fund research, we fund development in order to have all of these things in place. Then we'll be doing ourselves a favor. We'll have job. There will be jobs provision. There will be security. There will be health, and everything will align. Now, we 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 should look at providing some basic amenities like power for people in remote areas, in villages, so we don't start having inflow of people into urban centers. So. When we're talking about renewable energy, where we should be looking at mostly to impact more is villages, remote, remote places where they can feel the benefit of being in an urban center. Yeah. I think technology would cut across all sectors. Definitely. Like if you use technology, you know, to facilitate the projects that you're doing, instead of limiting it to just, you know, one person or one to one, you can make it something that can be a platform for others to build upon. Definitely. But one of the things that I feel also drive, that can drive solutions in Nigeria regarding our sectors is data. Yeah. I, we do not have enough data. And if you have adequate data, you can better position and tailor your solutions. I actually think we have data, but we don't have a database. So, okay. and That's um, true. For, 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 for the security, I think data is very, very important. So. We need to know how many people are coming into the country, how many people are moving into one state or the other, and all of this. Technology can enhance all of this. So that is why I want, most importantly, passionately, the security sector to reform itself and do something tangible for us. Mm -hmm. Sincerely right. yours. Thank you very much, guys, for talking to us. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. You're welcome. Let us know your thoughts on Nigeria's independence journey after 60 years on Twitter at Just Nigeria TV.